I believe there is hope for 2021. I believe there is hope for all of us. There is hope because of Jesus Christ. I want to read to you a verse in Matthew chapter 1. This is part of the Christmas story. It is part of the, the narrative that describes the birth of Jesus Christ. And I will only read one verse, but the entire story can be found in verses 18 up to uh, 25 of Matthew chapter 1. But uh, let me only read verse 23. All right. Verse 23. Um, we should read in verse 22. Okay? Are you there? Matthew chapter 1 verses 22 and 23. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to his son. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. They will call his name Emmanuel, or Emmanuel, which means God with us. So this prophet mentioned in verse 22 is the prophet Isaiah. He prophesied about a birth of a son by a virgin. A virgin shall be with child. And I see a chapter um, 7. And this is the fulfillment in verse 23 of Matthew chapter 1. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. The um, mystery or miracle about the birth of Jesus is that he was born of a virgin. A virgin will conceive. That is the sign of the birth of Jesus. A virgin will conceive. Biologically speaking, it is impossible for a virgin to have a child. Anyway, Jesus was born of a virgin and that is the sign of the coming Messiah. And this happened only through Virgin Mary. The message I'd like to share with you is from the word Emmanuel which means God is with us. M is a preposition uh, with. Nu is a pronoun us. And L means the mighty one or God. You know, Elohim, El Shaddai, those speaks of a God or a mighty, a mighty one. So Emmanuel, if you explain it literally, the M no in L with us the mighty one, or with us is God. And if you do the the proper or uses of grammar, Emmanuel means God with us. There are two things I'd like to explain about Emmanuel, God with us. First one is what I call Emmanuel, okay, Emmanuel defines the event in history 
when God became human. So Emmanuel describes the wonder of the incarnation. It defines the uh, event in history, in our history, when God, the third person of the Trinity, become human. God becoming human in theological term is called the incarnation. Incarnation. God becoming human. This incarnation describes the uh, identification or Jesus identifying himself with human. Rather, I would say God identifying himself with us human. So Emmanuel defines, let me repeat it, Emmanuel defines the event when God became human for all people. God with us. The reason I say that is, was God not there in the Old Testament for his people? Why would Jesus, I mean, why would the prophet talks about this event of the birth of Jesus as being God with us. God was there with Moses. God was with the Israelites, you know, when they travel in the wilderness. At night, there is light in the sky. And during daytime, there is a cloud. And that is the presence of God. And God was with them. So why would the prophet prophesied that the birth of Jesus describes this as God with us. Because God became human and that defines this name Emmanuel. It's the name of Jesus. Isn't it wonderful, friends, to know that God is with us? This description can be read further or explained further by John. I want to read it in John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and that life was with the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. In verse 14, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. So John is saying, in the beginning, we don't know when this beginning was, in the beginning was the word, okay, this word, Logos, and this Logos was with God. In this Logos was God. And through the Logos, or through Jesus, all things were made. And in this Logos, who created everything, in verse 14 says, the Word became flesh. This Word, this Logos, this God became human, became flesh. And John said, made his dwelling among us. So this God became human and therefore that is Emmanuel, God with us. He, he became one of us. He took the form of a human. He took the form of a human being. 
That's why Jesus is called, in theology, Jesus is called God-man. God-man. Jesus has two natures, God and human. How can a God be a God in human at the same time? He has two natures. Jesus existed before and then he became human. He took the nature of a man to identify. That's why it's called incarnation. To identify with human. Because a God cannot die. And Jesus took the nature of a man so that he will die. Because that's the reason Jesus came. I want to read more in verse 18 of John chapter 1. Look at here. No one has ever seen God. Look at that. No one has ever seen God. But the one and only Son, who is himself God, in his in closest relationship with the Father has made him known. John said, nobody saw God. No one has ever seen God except Jesus. Yet Jesus is God. He represents the Father. At one time, um, Philip was asking Jesus, oh, can you show us the Father? And Jesus told him, Philip, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. If you see Jesus, you see the Father, or you saw the Father, because Jesus said, the Father is in me and I am in the Father. That is an important relationship of the, of the Father and the Son. But in here we see that the Son was sent by the Father to earth and took the nature of a man. So he can identify with our needs. He can identify with our humanity. So that he would die on the cross. And that is why Emmanuel, as I said earlier, defines the event in history when God became human. For all people. The second one, Emmanuel describes the eternal presence of Christ for his people. Emmanuel describes the eternal presence of Christ for his people. Do you remember when, when Jesus, or before Jesus ascended to heaven, he instructed his disciples to go to all the world and preach the gospel, to baptize these people, to teach them everything Jesus commanded. And then at the end he said, I will be with you throughout the ages. Let, let me read that. This is a powerful verse that reminds us of the eternal presence of Jesus Christ. And surely, the last part of verse 20, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Okay, Jesus said, surely I am with you always. I want you to think about this. So the word God with us describes the presence of Christ, eternal presence of Christ for his people. He said, I am with you always. 
He's not only with us when we are on a mountain top. He is not only with us when things are going well. Which I know it's easy to say, God with us, praise God, when things are going well. But He is also with us when we are down in the valley. So when the word Emmanuel that says God with us does not only describe that God is with us when things are good, when things are going well, when we have all the things we need, but God is with us when we are in the valley, when we are in, in the wilderness, when we are going through fire of trials and sufferings. Here's the question that came to my mind this morning. How can I ever preach? How can I say God with us when COVID-19 is ravaging the entire world, destroying the economy of the world, killing people, limiting our freedom to travel, limiting our freedom to gather, I'm just alone right here. So how can we say God with us in times of pandemic? How can we ever say God with us when the world is full of misery, suffering, evil? What does it really mean God with us? One preacher said the word God with us mean that you are prosperous. And yet Jesus promises eternal presence with the disciples, but the old tide martyr, right? Except John, we know that. According to tradition, all the disciples except John died martyred. And yet Jesus promised he would be with them. He said, I am with you. Even, he did not even say, I will be with you. He actually said, I am. I am with you. And he said, always. Always means down in the valley, up in the mountain top. Always. And then he said, to the very end of the age. He is with you. From cradle to the grave, from birth to death, He is with you. And even until this planet ends, to the very end. So I'd like to say that God with us does not mean I am prosperous. God with us does not mean you will never get sick. God with us does not mean all the things you wanted will be given. God with us does not mean you won't go through persecution because immediately after this, the disciples were persecuted and many of them died for their faith. So the presence of Christ, that is what he promised. Um, they call this the present of presence. The gift of his presence. His promise of presence is enough. But his presence does not mean life without troubles. His presence does not exempt us from all the sufferings in the world. Just think about Job. Do you think God was not with Job? He was with Job. But Job lost everything except his life. 
So, only two things that I explained to you about Emmanuel that describes, that defines the event in history when God becomes human. And there's one verse that I forgot to read and that is in Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verse 6. Who being in very nature God, he did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of his servant, being made in human likeness. In being found in appearance of a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. That is Christ. That describes the event in history. Defines this word Emmanuel. And the second one, in Matthew 28 verse 20, describes the presence of Christ for his people. And I know you won't forget the word that we like to quote found in Hebrews chapter 13. Is it 13? I will never leave you nor forsake you. That is a promise of his presence. The same thing word Emmanuel. Being a man, being or having the nature of a man means he can identify with our suffering. He can identify with our needs. That Jesus could identify with the troubles, with the misery, with the sickness, with temptation, everything that we go through because he became a man. So he can identify with us. That's why it's called incarnation. It's identification. He identifies himself with human. But because he is God, he can also empower us. That he can also provide for our needs. That he can also give the power that we need to overcome these problems that we have. So he's a man, he identifies with that, with our suffering, but he is God, so he can help us. That is the nature of Christ. That's why his name is Emmanuel. But in the promise of his presence is interesting. That I will be with you, and I have this um, thing, question, a struggle with, and um, doubts, and you know, analyze many times that when Jesus said, I will, not I will, I am with you till the very end of the age, the promise of his presence does not mean that I get anything that I want. Well, but we think, but, but if God is with us, right? If God is with us, there's nothing that we should be afraid of, right? Because God is with us and he created the universe. He's more powerful. He's omnipotent being. And with the case of our friend Paolo, I have asked this a lot of time. He's in prison. Um, but Jesus promised his presence. Did he promise deliverance? Did he promise that you will never be accused? Did Jesus ever promise a good life? Well, he promised an abundant life. But abundant life doesn't mean, again, does not mean problem free, suffering free, sickness free. The presence is that God is there. Remember Joseph? 
He was in prison for two years. And the Bible said all this God was with Joseph. He was with Joseph in prison. But I know we ask the question, where is God? While he was accused for a crime he did not commit. He was in prison for a crime he didn't commit. Where is God? But God said, I, or rather, uh, the writer said, God was with Joseph. So again, his presence is enough. That is the promise. That if God is, if I can know, if I am absolutely certain that God is with me, if I am absolutely certain that God is with us, if we are absolutely certain that God is with us, then there is nothing that we should worry or be afraid of in the future or tomorrow. So what if I die? So what if we lose everything? What if we have nothing to eat? That does not mean there is no God. So I'd like to encourage people who question a lot. I, I do question a lot. I raise a lot of questions. And so I struggle with all these uh, questions, sometimes a difficult question that there is no answer to. And I settle with this, that God's presence is enough to carry us through to the very end of the age. And that's what Jesus promised to us. His presence. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that the name Jesus rings to our ears once again. The word Emmanuel, Emmanuel, God with us, that you are with us in ups and downs, that you are with us always to the very end of this age that your presence to be with us should encourage us to keep moving challenges comes along the way that seems at no end of the challenges that may come. But we still trust in you. That we declare with what Job said that yet, that even if he slays me, I will trust in him. That I will trust in you. That we will trust in you. That our faith is in you. That our faith does not depend on our circumstances. That our faith doesn't depend on the event of life. But our faith is based on the promise that you made. That our faith is founded on the Word of God. So we cling unto you. We believe in you. Thank you. And I pray for everyone who are listening today. That remind them of your presence. That your presence is a promise. It is a gift. That you are with us. Always. To the very end of the age. In the mighty name of Jesus. We ask this. The, the God who made the same promise. 
the incarnated God, the Messiah, Yeshua. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you.